prayer. Okay, at this point, I just want to speak, to say, speak to us, oh Lord, your servants are listening. So I'm officially handing over to our speaker for the week. We already know that we are led by Dr. Tankiso Litzeli. So this is over to you, my leader. Lead, lead us through. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, sister. And I believe the Lord is going to bless us today as we reflect on his word. Yesterday we were, we're looking at grace manifesting itself in the faith of the other. And I want to urge us that if we are still battling with the issues of faith, we need to pray and say, I believe, please help now my unbelief because someone might benefit from your faith. This morning, we're going to be talking about God's grace on the basis on, of someone's prayer. Yesterday, it was faith. Today, it is prayer. Uh, God's grace manifesting through the answer, through the prayer of the other. I'm going to uh, share a passage that I would like us to read, a passage that we are familiar with. Uh, the passage that is found in the book of uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter 19. I'm going to read verse, uh, five verses, and after that I'm going to remove the, 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 this passage, then we will reflect on this passage. Genesis chapter 19, we read from verse 15, at dawn the angels hurried Lord along, saying, get going, take your wife, and your two daughters who are here, or else you will be destroyed when the city is judged. 16, when Lot hesitated, the man grabbed his hand and the hands of his wife and two, two daughters, because the Lord had compassion on them. They led them away and placed them outside the city. 17, when they had brought them outside, they said, run for your lives. Don't look back behind you or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you will be destroyed. We'll skip to verse 19. Uh, verse 19 reads, your servant has found favor with you and you have shown me great kindness by sparing my life. I will now go to the last passage, uh, verse 29. Verse 29 reads, so when God destroyed the cities of the region, God honored Abraham's request. He removed Lot from the midst of the destruction when he destroyed the cities Lot had lived in. May God bless and nourish his word and plant his word in our hearts so that it can germinate and save us into the kingdom. May God bless us all. Let's reflect on this passage, uh, just a little background. I know that most of you have read the passage. Actually, the story begins in chapter 18. Chapter 19 is actually the climax of the story. The story begins in chapter 18. Let's start off with the story. Let's just give a little background to what happened. Uh, Abraham is sitting at the entrance of his tent and he's, it's, it's during the day. And lo and behold, he saw three men and when he saw these men, he said to them, um, could you please come by? I see that you look tired, come and rest. I will prepare you food and I will wash your feet and I will make sure that you rest before you proceed with your, with your, with your journey. And they have obliged and they accepted the invitation. And uh, Sarah prepared food for them and Abraham instructed his servants to prepare something for them. And while they were sitting, eating, the passage says, the Lord said to Abraham, one of them who for some reasons was the Lord, and I believe it was Jesus Christ said to, to Abraham, uh, Abraham, next year around this time, next year, mark this day, Abraham, mark this time, mark this month, mark this day, next year around this time, 
you and Sarah are going to become parents. You will be parenting a child. You will have a child. And uh, now the passage says, and Sarah overheard the conversation when she was in another tent and, and she laughed within herself. She looked at herself and she laughed. And when she came to, 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 give, to, to give some more food to them, the Lord said to them, why did you laugh when I was talking to Abraham? Why did you laugh when I was talking about the promise of a son? Why did you laugh? And she said, I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. You laughed. And then the two other angels departed. And the Lord remained with Abraham. And Sarah continued with her, with her chores. And, 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 and the Lord said to Abraham, Abraham, you are my friend. I need to tell you why we are taking this trip. We are going to evaluate if Sodom is ready for harvest. The sinfulness, the wickedness of that city has reached heaven. They have, they, are, they have crossed a line which cannot be seen. We want to check if indeed we should meet judgment on them. And Abraham got a shock, shock of his life and he said, wait, 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 I have some relatives there. Can you, as a loving God, destroy the unrighteous together with the remnant? No ways. And the Lord said, no, I don't work like that. I don't work like that. Uh, I cannot do such a thing. And Abraham said, what about if there are 50? What about 45? What about 40, 30, 20, 10? And the Lord said, Abraham, I will not destroy the unrighteous together with the righteous. And the Lord departed. This is now chapter 18. Then they arrived in Sodom and Lot was sitting at the gate of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot saw the two, at this time, the Lord was not part of the trip. There were two angels who were there. Uh, these two angels, Lord saw them and he said, uh, come, 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 be my guest. I don't want you to spend it, the, your time in the streets of Sodom and Gomorrah. They said, no, 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 we please don't bother yourself. We will, we will take care of, of ourselves. And, and they, they, there was this scene where Lord was begging them to accept his invitation and they were declining the invitation. And, 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 and the Sodomites were also watching. And Ultimately, the two angels obliged. He said, okay, 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 you have begged us. Let's go to your house. So they went to his, he, he, he prepared food for them. Now, 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 I'm not going to get into this. At Abraham's house, Sarah prepared food. But at Lot's house, Lot himself prepared food. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not saying who should prepare food, but I'm just describing what happened. Sarah and the servants prepared food. Abraham, while Abraham was discussing. But in Lot's house, Lot had to, to go and prepare food and he brought food to them. And while they were eating, according to the passage, while they were eating, they heard a bang at the knock. Where are them? You know the story. And, 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 and the, the man of Sodom wanted to molest the two angels, the two guests. And you know how, how, how Lot negotiated with them. He even did something that is terrible. He even said, I have two daughters here. Please let go my guest and have my two daughters. I don't know why he did that. And, and, and I must also say, I don't know why the mother did not protect the children, the daughters. I'm no, I don't know, but we don't find anything in that. And the, the, the passage says that Sodoma, Sodomites were struck with, with, with blindness. You all know the story. Um, then then Lord discovered who he was dealing with. He said, who are you? Uh, who are you? They said, we are here because of, what, of the very thing that you've just seen. The Sodomites have crossed a hidden line. The door of mercy has closed for them. We are here to destroy. We just wanted to evaluate if it is true. But now that we know they even wanted to harm us, we are here to destroy this city. In the, and, and they said to him, uh, listen, go out and get your relatives. We need to, you need to leave the city. Uh, you know the story. He went to, his, uh, to, to, the, the, to the two young men who had pledged to marry 
his daughters and they said, old man, do you think life is going to change? Who told you that this beautiful city, these plains of Sodom, these cities, man, it took us long to build. No one can destroy this. This is good. Man, there's nothing that can be better than this. I think you are joking, old man. Go back to where you come from. And they continued. And a, a, a Lord came back and gave the report. In the early hours of the morning, the two angels said, Lord, wake up. We need to leave this city. We need to leave this city because God is going to destroy this city. And the passage that we've read said, says, Lord hesitated. Other passages would say, Lord lingered. In other words, the person who's lingering is the person who's resisting. He's resisting. He's saying, no, I'm not leaving. They say, Lord, we are here to destroy. You saw what happened. You saw the miracles. We mean business. We are who we told you to be. We are from heaven. We are here to destroy the city. You saw the miracles that we performed. And Lord said, yeah, I saw. I said, but I'm not going anywhere. Um, now, this became a crisis. Now, it was a crisis for the two angels. And the two angels said, what do we do? They said, let's check with the Lord. The Lord is an Adam. Let's check with the Lord. And the Lord said, what's the problem? Lord, we have a problem. Remember, we're with Abraham. And he interceded for, 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 for Lot and his family. But now this guy is refusing together with his family. What do we do? What do we do? And the Lord said, um, what are you going to do? And they said, we don't know. Please help us. What did Abraham say to you? He said, please save my nephew together with his family. So what's your problem? But the nephew does not want to be saved. What, what do we do, Lord? Do we respect the power of choice or do we honor Abraham's prayer? What do we do? And the Lord said, if you don't answer the prayer of Abraham, how are you going to face him? What is going to be the explanation? They said, okay, now we understand, we understand. And they talked among each other. They said, I'm going to grab Abraham, I'm going to grab Lot and his wife. You grab the two daughters. And they grabbed them by the hands and they pulled them out of the house. Now have, imagine someone who's being dragged out of the house. They try to hold on to anything that they can hold on to so that they save themselves. And, and, and through that commotion, the Sodomites hid. And they said, yeah, you are getting what you deserve. If you had given us those men, they would not be harassing you the way they are harassing you. They dragged them out of the house, out of the city, into the, into the mountains. And, 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 and now let me just pause a little bit here. This is the first time where a person is saved against their will. Normally, the story is, whosoever will, let them, let, let them come. But this time, this time, the angels are saying, we are taking you along with us. Whether you like it or not, we are taking you. We are taking you. We have a commitment that we have made. We are taking you. And they saved a lot. But now, friends, I want you to pay attention to this. Once they were outside, Lord, from the passages that we have read, realized that these people who saved them were actually merciful to them. He even said, I, I know, I saw that you showed mercy to us. But initially, he was hesitating. They did not want to leave. Now that they've been saved, they, a, a, a lot and his family say, we, are, we, we see that you have saved us. But now that was not the end of the story. Remember, they've been saved because of the prayer of Abraham, not because they wanted to be saved. This was the first time in the scriptures where someone was saved against their will. But they were saved not on the basis of their resistance, but on the basis of someone's prayer. Maybe I should pause here and say, let's not stop praying. Who knows? Who knows if someone would be dragged by the hand out of the burning Sodom into the safety of the mountains, into the safety of God's grace? Now, the second part of this, they now realize that, hey, we have been saved. And the Lord says to them, now this time, the, the passage says, 
the Lord said to them, apparently Jesus Christ was now around. And the, and the Lord said to them, I, 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 now I'm giving you an instruction. I don't want you to look back. I want you to run, escape, don't look back, don't remain here, keep on running, keep on running. And, and they say, yes, we'll keep on running. Thank you for saving us. And Lord, and Lord even said, I'm happy that we found mercy in your, in your, in, in, in your, in, in your eyes. We're so happy, we're so happy. And uh, the angels and the Lord turned towards Sodom to finish the work. Now the story says, Lord, and the two daughters ran and did not look back. Unfortunately, Mrs. Mrs. Lord looked back. Now, friends, they were saved by grace. That grace came on the basis of someone's prayer. But remember, grace does not save you to disobedience. Grace saves you to God's lordship. Jesus Christ does not save us in order to let us go and do as we please. When he saves us, he welcomes us into the family. He saves us into his lordship. So that this is not cheap grace. Cheap grace says, I now save you, but I'm walking away. See how to, how to finish. But amazing grace says, I'm going to save you on the basis of someone's prayer, but I'm not saving you so that you can behave any other way. I'm going to test you that you appreciate this salvation. Don't look back. I'm now giving you, I'm now lording over your life. Don't look back. Run for your life. Don't look back. Now, there was nothing in looking, but it was a test of obedience. It was a test to show that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, because I've saved you. I'll... Now remember, God does not give commandments before salvation. He saves you first. He exercises grace. He reaches you first. He dies for you at the cross. Romans 5 verse 8. While we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. And grace, amazing grace, based on someone's prayer, does not rescue us to disobedience. It rescues us so that we can be under the lordship of Jesus. And 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 then the, the, the verse, the, uh, uh, um, Genesis 19.29 says, it summarizes the story. It says, while God was destroying the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, he remembered the prayer of Abraham and he saved Lot. So Lot was saved on the basis of someone's prayer, but he was kept saved by his choice. Remember, they had no choices in leaving Sodom, but they had a choice in remaining under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and respecting him. And Mrs. Lord chose not to be under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. She chose cheap grace and cheap grace did not get her anywhere. But Lord and his daughters chose amazing grace. Amazing grace says, I have saved you. You did not want to save to be saved. The reason why it is amazing, it is the reason why this grace is amazing. It's simply because you didn't want to be saved. But now that you are saved, you are at home. You are under the lordship of Jesus Christ. But Mrs. Lord chose cheap grace. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. As we close. Let's not stop interceding for our loved ones. Let's not stop praying for our loved ones. Who knows that God will save them against their choices. But once they have been saved, they will appreciate salvation and choose to be under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. May God bless us as we begin this day. Amen. 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 My pastor, please pray for us in closing. Let's pray together. 
Father, we thank you, Lord, for scattering the messages, the stories of grace, even in the Old Testament, where people believe that there are no stories of God's grace in the Old Testament. But we see grace. We see your grace in the lives of your children. We see unwilling sinners being saved, not because they deserved, simply because someone prayed for them. I pray that, Lord, we will continue to pray for our loved ones, we will continue to pray for our children, for our uncles, for those that are sick. And we must continue to pray for their salvation so that they can be restored to the Lordship of Jesus. We thank you for hearing this prayer. And we put the name Jesus on our prayers. And we know that when we have put the name Jesus on our prayers, the answer is yes to our prayers. Therefore, we thank you. We praise you for hearing and answering our prayers through the name of Jesus. Amen.